Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Filmmaker in Conversation for FOFS 2020. Uh, these short videos will help bridge audiences with filmmakers, giving, hopefully, uh, some insight and context into the work featured on CBC GEM as a part of our partnership this year with FOFS. Um, here today are Rebecca Love and Connor Casey, direct co-directors of RIPE. Initially, I guess uh, I'll get started first on the idea of collaboration. I'm interested from both of you, I guess. Rebecca, from you, I'm interested in bringing your thematic sort of quality, like your, your thematic consistency in your work into this collaborative process. And from Connor, um, how, how it was, what, what it was like entering sort of like essentially like a continuity really and finding a way to create something anew with the both of you. So I had never collaborated with anyone at this level, at the sort of creative writing and directing level before. Um, I, prior to RIPE, I was mostly writing and directing stories about young people trying to find their way. Connor watched Acres and he, he thought that the, the, the story universe of Acres was one he was familiar with and comfortable with and um, one that he enjoyed, but he thought that it was a story that could have been injected with a little bit more humor. And um, when I first met Connor, I was focusing on his comics and I was really impressed with these comics that I thought were um, clever and they spoke to a kind of millennial anxiety that I could really identify with. So between um, the conversations we were having about Connor's comics and the conversations we were having about Acres, uh, it sort of occurred to us that maybe we should consider collaborating. And so that represented a great tonal shift in my work, um, introducing a little bit of comedy. And uh, it, was, it was exciting. It was really exciting. I do not consider myself a funny person. I do not know very much about um, creating comedy in, in film. Uh, so throughout the whole process, I, was, I felt like I was mostly just learning. I was learning about um, how, to, how, how to write co comedy. Uh, Connor and I wrote the story of Ripe together, but he wrote the screenplay himself. And, um, and then in the editing room, just watching Connor and his brother Lyndon um, with the edit, I was learning about comedy. I, 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 I didn't feel I was contributing as much. I was more sort of taking notes. Um, but yeah, there was a tonal shift. Um, uh, the end result was more entertaining, I think, than a lot of my um, older work. But uh, yeah, I learned a lot. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as far as collaboration is concerned, I, I guess I always consider myself to be a collaborator at heart, really. I, I, I always work with, if I'm not working with my brothers, um, like she said, my brother Lyndon Casey, who I'm basically writing partners with, or my brother Dylan Casey, who's an actor. I'm always kind of excited at the idea of, of finding someone who has a, uh, a creative spirit or creative tone that I feel like I can relate to or blend with and, and basically just try to insert myself <laughs> um which is kind of what i think i did was lucky enough to do with rebecca who yes like she said i saw acres and as i was watching it i thought wow this is a, a universe that i feel like a character that i could maybe play could exist in um, and that's kind of where i come from with all my sort of collaborative uh endeavors i like to just imagine sort of how our worlds could mesh together and i felt with rebecca because generally what I tend to look for, or at least I'm drawn to, is just a sense of like sadness and kind of pathos, I guess, and aching acres. Like I, I love playing characters that ache because I just feel, you know, with aching the sad clown, so to speak, um, I just feel like, like very uh, connected to that character and, and to that vibe. And when I saw that she had it, I was very excited to, uh, to work together. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, the, the work itself, there's a, you know, there's a very internal paranoia that sort of, that, that sits at the, at the core of both characters, but, you know, in their conversation with one another, um, at least superficially, you, you, you can't really sense that um, through, through especially, I mean, your performance, especially, 
um, which it, it, like it, it's it's a film that's easy to call charming, but I think especially by by the time the credits come and we have uh, that performance uh, that is highlighted at the end, the first time we also I believe uh, leave the house um, where everything really becomes. I mean, exactly the word pathos is very articulate. Uh, we just sort of were able to stew uh, in the sort of aftermath of quirk, which is, uh, which was really new. Uh, Connor, I'm interested if you could uh, speak to uh, the script writing process, but also um, looking at essentially the work that you've created here and how in your future endeavors as a filmmaker, you're you're looking you'll take this work with you yeah i think uh first and foremost the dance sequence at the end um was very much a rebecca driven ending and i'm very very happy that we ended the film like that uh when she when we first started the collaboration she basically you know after seeing the comic rebecca had come to me and said like let's make a movie i got like one rule there has to be a dance sequence and at least that's how I remember it. And, and I'm like, okay, well, me being a bit of a, you know, I tend to, to go for the joke and I tend to maybe be a little guarded about being vulnerable sometimes. Um, I thought, oh, it's going to be silly, this and that. And I think I was very wrong in that. I, I'm very happy that we ended it like that. Um, so I think, you know, moving forward, I'm going to, uh, you know, allow myself to be a bit more vulnerable to moments like that. Um, whether it's working with Rebecca again and she, you know, allows me to go to those places or just with anyone. It's just, you know, don't be so quick to try to end everything with a, you know, a wrap up joke or something. It's okay to live in moments and, and, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, I, I'd like to, I'd like to ask, uh, look, specifically looking at, looking at Ripe, um, looking at the yet to be seen, uh, Parlor Palm, uh, which I am, um, and but also looking at something like um, I believe oh the, the title a woman's uh, I'm sorry what was the title woman's block a woman's block the way in which uh, I mean domestic spaces specifically I guess in a woman's block it was her bedroom in ripe it is it is the the foyer in the living room is, and similarly in Palmer Palmer Palm uh, you find a way really breathtakingly to capture, uh, I mean, you capture the space very, in a variety of different ways through these three films, but all like similarly, we, we, there is an entrapment. Um, and I, I'm curious if you can speak on your own perspective uh, and the way in which you're interested in setting these stories within, within the house. Sure, so all three of those films were shot at my parents' house in Toronto. And I used to think that I loved shooting at my parents' house because it was cheap and because I had this emotional connection to the space. But as time went on, I spent a little bit more time uh, examining the, the choice to shoot at this space. And I realized uh, it's probably tied to uh, my health in the sense that when I was 18, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And then at 23, I was diagnosed with arthritis. And between both of those diseases, I spent so many hours recovering at my parents' house. And uh, all of those hours spent in recovery allowed me to find a creative voice in the se in a sense. Um, you know, I wasn't quite able to go to work, but I did, find the energy and the time to work on creative projects. Um, but there's also a kind of claustrophobia that comes with um, being restricted to your house, especially your parents' house. Um, you, you don't have the energy or the resources necessarily to be out in the world, going to exciting locations. Um, both as a filmmaker, but then also just as a person, like you, you, you don't, you, you can't um, climb mountains and go scuba diving and go to Los Angeles or Florida or France or wherever, like you really are spending a lot of time at home. Um, so for me, I think um, 
I have fought really hard to find the beauty of of staying within a small space. There's a Blaise Pascal quote I love that goes something like, all of mankind's problems stem from the from his inability to sit in a room alone. Like I love the idea of um, like um, constraints and and finding beauty within our limitations. But then there there is also like a frustration or like a, a claustrophobia. So so in ripe you'll find like that almost the entire conversation takes place within the dining room and the space kind of closes in on you a little bit. Uh, so when she finally goes out into the garden, it's like a release. And um, that's, that's a little bit of how I feel as a person when it comes to um, domestic spaces. They're beautiful, but then they're also, um, not, I'm, I'm not going to use the word prison because that's a bit extreme. Mm. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit frustrating to be stuck in, in these spaces. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, the, the, like, you know, through, through the works, the familiarity that one can engage with, 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 with the environment is, is really astounding. And, but, but, but the fact is that, you know, when, like, when we get to the, the end moments of, you know, it's essentially all the films, there is this very, uh, like, cathartic sense but also like the only, there's only a catharsis because there's the ability to actually recognize what our relationship to that space was mm -hmm. uh and i think that's an incredibly impressive feat uh especially in in a short uh and to attach that to a character specifically is um i, I think special i'd actually like if the two of you could uh, quickly just discuss um what the what the actual collaboration on on set was how how the co-direction operated um wh what that kind of conversation was uh, and essentially just figuring uh just the positionalities of each of you in relationship to your actors in relationship to your dop in relationship to every all of your uh, crew members in which you had to you know obviously converse with and tell you know essentially relay what your ideas were so essentially, how was that for you two? So um, just to just to describe how this co-direction came to be, um, originally the way we had it planned was Connor and I would write the story to come up with the story together, and then Connor would write the screenplay. And originally, it was just going to be me directing. Mm -hmm. And um, on the day of production, I was the director. Um, Connor had incredible notes and insights but at that point like I I was directing um but as we got into the edit as I was sort of touching on earlier it dawned on me that um there were there were things about editing comedy that I just did not understand and I had never done anything like that before and I felt like I um I I I did not feel like I, I could do the edit by myself as a singular director. So then we brought Connor on as a co-director and uh, he and Lyndon, um, they sort of directed the edit. Okay. Okay. No, I, I actually, okay. I, I, because I mean, you, you were one of the main performers, Connor. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rebecca, so could, could, uh, could you actually just talk about like, directing your, your performers during this, specifically directing Connor? I think that would be. Sure. So um, when we went into production, um, Connor and Sarah were improvising over a script. Uh, and um, I think the work that I saw myself doing as a director um, when working with both Connor and Sarah was more focused on um, sort of shaping the relationship between um, Connor's character and Sarah's character um, and uh, creating a believable sense of, of a believable partnership. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I felt that uh, my work as a director on the day of shooting was most, um, yeah, just being able to say, take a step back and, and, um, and help 
sort of craft that relationship. And then also with Sarah's dance, uh, we had a lot of conversations about what was going on um, with her, um, what was she trying to express in that dance? And we had a lot of conversations about um, totally what we want that dance to look like. So originally we had a very fast paced song um, that was laid over top of the dance and it was a very like high energy, um, dance but then we ultimately ended up deciding uh to go for a much more quiet and um soft but it was more just just a conversation with sarah about what it what it means to suddenly lose um that hope of of your creative ambition and yeah um so I guess looking at those two things, looking at the relationship between Connor and Sarah's character, and then looking at Sarah's um, Sarah's final movement piece. Mm -hmm. No, I I like I mean I, as I've said earlier in this conversation, I think the the work done uh, to balance like the interiority of the characters, especially Sarah's character, and the uh, what must be a cacophony of of contradictions just blitzing in her mind. We almost uh, called it that actually. We almost called it a cacophony of contradictions. <laughs> well, then we went with rife instead. <laughs> yeah, it was down to those. Hey, both, both fine titles, but yeah. just the, like the ability that you, that, the, I, well, not the ability that, you know, the fact that you were able to render and realize something that was really affecting especially you know through through this very you know this essentially this uh, the superficial element of the comedy but allowing that to actually speak to something far more you know in, internal and far i, I think I, I think uh rebecca you mentioned at the beginning the the very general anxieties of a millennial uh especially just like you know being able to sort of have being forced at this point to ha to look to balance livelihood and career and passion uh and also like like family and, and just all of these elements that you're sort of at this point thrown into and have to figure what what is what what can be and what is the decision that we have to make and luckily your film actually really does i think a really fantastic job realizing the idea of togetherness but also that even in that relationship, there is going to be something deeply internal. The other person will never, never actually understand. Yeah, I mean, um, look, look I, I actually went through this moment, basically. A, a ex-girlfriend at the time, or a girlfriend at the time, ex now, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and immediately we're in a doctor's office, like a day, two days later, and the doctor's saying, do you guys want to have kids? And look, we were both artists. We were both open to kids as we say in the film which i say are people that are you know putting off the conversation more than anything really yeah. uh, the way we got through that moment was through humor uh, as much as it was a you know sad moment tears are shed everything so you know it tends to be that i find taking those moments that actually happened to you and that were very intense and, and heartfelt and adding humor to them is actually how we deal with them in real life anyway at least mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. No. Well, thank you. Thank you both of you um, for joining us uh, for this first uh, in conversation. Um, thank you. I, thank I you. hope you all uh, a good, a good festival, a good rest of 2020. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Zach. Thank you.